Hey guys, welcome back to the channel once again. So we're back here at James Nolan Shed. We've got 34 chilling behind us. But that's not why we're here today. If you have seen on James' channel recently, he's just bought himself another project car and he's got himself a GC8 WRX Subaru out of everything. So we're here today to help him try to get the thing started. Uh, apparently the old owner has tried to get it started and had no success. So we're here having a go. Um, we've already done a few bits and pieces on it, so I'll just run you guys through what we've done, what we've tried to figure out. Um, before I go too far into that, if you want to see when he first got the car, I'll put the link down to that video in the description right at the top there, so go check that out first, just so you got a bit of a backstory. Uh, pretty much what we've tried to do is, James noticed that when he gets onto the harmonic balancer and tries to turn it a bit to the left and the right, it wasn't going very far, um, and it was, if he wanted to push it any further, he'd really have to force it. Um, so we just tried right off the bat, put a battery on and just tried to start it and see what would happen. And the starter just had a single click, which essentially is just the starter trying to turn the flywheel around to get the motor to start. And because it was so stuck, it wouldn't actually turn over. What we kind of got it down to was something seized. Um, so James jumped on with a big bar and just turned it and it came free. We managed to get a rotation out of it. Uh, but it was still quite stiff, so now that we've tried to start it, it will slowly crank over, but it's still very tight in there. Uh, so pretty much what we're doing now is going to drain the oil out and see what's going on with the oil, because it is pretty dirty uh, and it may have gone sludgy and that may be causing the problem. Just by pulling the sump plug out a little bit, looks like we saw a bit of water or fuel. Hopefully, I, I think it's water and there was a fair bit of water that came out, so going to drain the oil out. James has got some old recycled oil somewhere, so he'll chuck that back in and we'll see what will happen with it. Hopefully we can get this thing to at least crank nicely. Um, it's not doing it very nicely at the moment because it is so seized up. Um, and we don't know how long the car's been sitting around. We don't know how long this other guy's tried to play around with it. So um, we're just trying things. That's all you can do really, just try things. So we've got it to turn over a bit more freely. I'm just gonna check the oil now, put some fresh stuff in. Um, and pretty much go from there, see if we can get anything to work from it. So chuck in a few little clips now of just a bit of a around the car so you can see what it's all about. And we're gonna drain some oil out, put some fresh stuff in that is not full of water and see if we can get anything, well, I guess any better results out of it. So see you guys shortly. So this is the oil that came out, and it's it still flows and moves around, but it's quite thick, and you can see all the lumpy kind of crap through it. So I think that's a wing or something <laughs> of an insect. That is thick. So <laughs> pretty thick oil, which shouldn't be causing the problem, but at least with some fresh stuff that flows a bit better, hopefully we can get that into the bores. That's what we've kind of got it down to is that. The bores, we actually had like half a cup of water come out before that oil came out. Um, water or fuel, whatever it was. But we're thinking that the bores themselves are all nasty. Um, and by that I mean it's been sitting for so long and potentially had water in the bores with no oil that it's pretty much just seized in place and there'll be rust spots all up the bores um, and it won't be very nice. So pretty much what we're going to do now is put some fresh oil in, try to crank it again and hopefully feed a bit of that fresh oil um, into the bore um, and just around those rings and hopefully get things to just pick up a bit better. Um, if that doesn't work, pretty much from there, we're just gonna keep working this balancer back and forth. Um, and as the pistons move up and down, it'll hopefully scrape off all that stuff that's sitting in the bores. Um, and it's just gonna keep getting better and better. We'll see how many charges we have left because we've already used up two out of four on the jump pack to try get this thing going. but. Um, we checked the timing. The timing all looks good. All the marks line up as you'd expect them to, so that's definitely a bonus. But, um, yeah, seems to be going pretty well. There's a power steering pup missing, obviously, but don't need power steering. You'll be on the dirt anyway. Yeah, I know. We'll be loving it. Man, only men have 
no power steering. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You can't say that, it's 20, 20, 20. <laughs> <laughs> You can be whatever you want to be. So, it's pretty, pretty special. All these bolts aren't even done up and stuff. It's like some dudes tried to fix it and just proper given up. He's had enough of it. So, I'm gonna put some oil in and see what happens. Should have seen, when I, should have seen when I went to pick it up, eh? Poor bugger. It's like on a grass hill, so the car's on a bit of an angle. Yeah. We go to push it down the hill onto the trailer. Yeah. And it's stuck, it wouldn't go anywhere. He's like, oh, what the hell? He's like, oh, it must be in gear. Gets it out of gear, go to push it, the front wheel just like turns in and it won't go and he's like oh shit he's like and he runs off and grabs a jack from the shed puts a jack under there starts jacking it up the jack rolls because it's on a hill oh my rolls God. Under it. it didn't really damage anything but it was just stuck yeah gets another jack jacks it up from that side gets his jack out takes the wheel off and the knuckle like the arm the lower control arm wasn't attached to the knuckle yeah like the ball joint he puts that back and puts it on and then we put it on the trailer and like i was just watching it <laughs> You know. Could have been you doing it though, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you pay good money for things like this, you expect it to be loaded on your trailer for you. I know. Exactly. That's, I was like, man, I want a discount, so I'm not yeah, going to help you. Exactly. It's only fair. Yeah. Well, I'm going to drop this off the jack stands then, chuck some recycled oil in that's better than what was in it, and um, yeah, see what happens, I guess. That's it. What was that? I used to do that. Record. There's oil coming oh, out. Oh, there's a lot of oil coming out. Where is it coming from? Does it do with the CV joint thing? No. That would be... Shit. That, that's a loose bolt down there. That is a loose bolt. Oh, that's do a very loose bolt. Oh, I so we got a fully again. hectic right. oil leak. That's like a legit oil leak. Coming out of the back of the rocker cover like hectically. Oh, no, this is a good photo. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. That's why you don't put new oil in it. So I don't know if you can see, but if we can get it to focus down there, right down the bottom there is a bolt that isn't even tight. It looks like all those three along the bottom aren't tight. Yeah. So Got a hectic leak out of the rocket cover. So <laughs> I've got no oil in it. Well, yeah, then all not. that oil came out of it. Pretty weird. Maybe you topped it up with water. You might have done. Who knows? Topped it up with canola oil. So we're gonna tighten those three out, and then hopefully that'll stop the oil pissing out. <laughs> Probably why there's bugger all oil in the bloody thing. But there was lots of oil. It's weird. This car's weird. It is a Subaru though. So I pretty much found out that the reason that back one is leaking so much and that's not tight is because there's those little golden washers you can kind of see in the center of frame there. And that washer down the back isn't there. So essentially that bolt isn't actually clamping at all. So that's what's going on there. I'm gonna tighten all the other ones, chuck some washers behind that one at the back there, tighten them all up and see what happens. We're gonna have to pull the motor apart and just feed a shitload of WD into it and then get, get it turning and just free it up. And then, even then, it might not fix the problem. But for all the fucking rounds, it's just worth getting another, another one. Another engine, yeah, yeah, for sure. And at least you can keep this one and strip it down, you get all the content and stuff you can make out of it. You might even find that it might come good after mm. a bit of WD, you got a spare motor. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be anything to do with a starter motor? Could be, the starter could be cooked. Yeah. But even if the starter is cooked, it's probably cooked because it can't turn that over. You yeah. should be able to turn that over so much so load. Yeah. I'd say that's probably half the issue. Yeah, it could have stuffed the starter from having seized. Yeah. He would have been load. cranking the fuck out of it. Oh, it won't mm. start. Mm. Just would have cooked it. Mm. So maybe try a new starter motor first. And you, you'll just cook the new starter. It'll do mm -hmm. the exact same thing. But it's not stuck now. 
jump in the old Civic. Yeah. And just bring the revs up a bit. Thank you. Because I don't want to kill the battery in that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but fuck. The door just hit me. <coughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Alrighty, so after all of that, couldn't get it to start, couldn't get it to crank properly. Um, what we think is that the guy who had it previously has just been hanging off the starter trying to get it to go, um, and he's probably cooked the starter, um, but the motor is still really, really tight to turn over, um, and that'll just be from sitting for so long, everything seizing in place, and you could probably just keep going at it, but with no lubrication in there, it's going to be very hard to wear off whatever's there. Um, by that I mean inside the bore. Uh, we can't get the crank long enough to actually send any oil around the motor and we obviously can't spray directly into the bore with WD or anything like that so kind of leaves it there for us. A um, bit unfortunate but is what it is with a car you don't know the condition of sometimes that happens but pretty much going to leave it there for this video. Hopefully we'll have more videos on this car soon uh, but at this stage it's looking like a second hand motor is going to be the way to go. Um, Obviously the pretty hectic oil leak as well, um, could be a rock cover gasket, probably is, rather than the spacers. Um, so it's going to need a motor, fix a heap of problems, get a heap of new accessories. But for now, leave it there and see you guys in the next video.